Oh, you know what? I missed that last part. Could you do that again? Oh, my pleasure. He had hoped to get a second opinion. Okay, just turn off the camera, Clark. Oh, no, this is so good. <laughs> do you stand by that last answer? Could the court please read it back? Um, um. I feel that maybe um, and there are 32 more ums. Then you said, lawyers be trifling. <laughs> then you asked for a mistrial. Then you said, hey, look over there, and tried to leave the stand. Wow, someone's obsessed with me. Tony Tone Show, Muscatine's Vintage Sound, 93.1 FM. Tonight at 7.30 on ABC. You gotta watch Dr. Ken with Ken Jong. Season 2, the show is hilarious. You're gonna love it. You're gonna take a lot away from it. You just heard some audio from Dr. Ken. And on the MPW Digital TV Celebrity Hotline is the star. He's back once again, our buddy, our friend, Ken Jong. Hey. Hey, Tony. How you doing? I feel I'm great. I feel like we're best friends because I think this is your third appearance on my radio show in Iowa. So hi, buddy. Hey, man. Well, thank you for all the continued love and helping us get a second year, man. I really appreciate it, dude. I'll tell you, you know what, Ken, the last time we spoke, um, the fate of Dr. Ken on ABC was still up in the air. But I told you at that time, I I felt like this show was going to get a second season because it was so well done, and each week it was compelling, it was funny, it was sincere, it was endearing, and it happened. And I wonder for you, Ken, where were you when they said we're going to do a second season, and what was your reaction? Oh, I mean, I... When they called, they called me. I was at home. It was in May, and they called me. And you know, I was really, um, you know, I was really moved. I, you know, I was really moved, and and I was just so. I just remember feeling so grateful, you know, to the network just for for giving our show another year. Because in this day and age of television, even getting a second year, uh, that rarely happens. In you know, if you look at it statistically. And so it, it's uncommon. So uh, uh, I'm just so gr- you know I'm just so grateful to ABC and and to Sony, our parent studio, you know, to allow us to have another season of Dr. Ken. It really, yeah, I, I don't take it. I didn't take it for granted, and I still don't, you know. And here I am, my third call, you know, just you know, doing, just still, still grinding away, you know, <laughs> still chopping wood, carrying water, which is. Really, I just I just want to work. You know, I quit my day job, um, you know, as a doctor, so I could work as a fake doctor, <laughs> and uh, you know, and it's and it's a lot more fun and do my comedy, you know, and just do my thing. I'm just so I can't believe I've been allowed another season to kind of do my thing, and I'm very appreciative. Well, it was it was so well done, and um, I wonder with the second season, and you get that call. Do you feel pressure because the first season, like I said, each episode, and I watched every single one, and each episode was was great, and and I wonder when you start to work on season two, did you have things in mind already, or did you not want to put uh, the horse before the cart? You know what I mean? Like were you were you the cart before the horse? Were you were you prepared if it was going to happen, or did you have to go right to work when they call? Um, that's a great question. I mean, no, we we had. We had a story idea already for season two, um, you know, in, in the works, even at the, even, you know, between season one and season two. And, you know, I had, we had other ideas of what we wanted to do. And, and what I like about this season, we knew the show, to answer your question, no, we went raring to go. Mm-hmm. And we, you know, I, I had a very, I have a clearer vision now for the show than I did last year. And like Allison and I can sum it up in this interview. Like Allison works at Wiltopia now, and that's a full-time thing, uh, which is similar to what my wife did in real life. We work at the same age. We worked at the same HMO, and my character's father, DK, moves in the house and permanently. And we explain it. We explain why in a couple of episodes. Um, we have basically the emphasis this year has been on family. What really has worked more than ever was kind of the family, but. I am a doctor, and so we want to make everything. Our mantra is to make it more emotionally grounded. So you're gonna, you're basically gonna see a lot of more. I think a lot of more emotional stories because at my heart, as a you know, as a producer, and you know, I, as an aspiring filmmaker, I've directed like a Thirty for Thirty and a couple of things. You know, my my producing style. I'm a very emotional 
filmmaker. Mm-hmm. And so, so basically I've tapped into that even more. It's not, last year I kind of wanted to prove I was, our show was funny. I sure. knew I was funny, but sure. I wanted to prove our show was funny. And now, you know, I just want to prove our show is good, like really good. So I'm, ironically more driven than ever i'm not resting on anything <laughs> i think that's great though and i and i can totally appreciate that if you're just joining us that's ken jong dr ken 7 30 central tonight on abc you know ken i have um i have a four-year-old and an almost two-year-old and i work and my wife works and we kind of have opposite schedules and when i see a show like dr ken i can draw on a lot of uh similarities between my life and, and even though it's a tv show i think that you have done a great job and making those connections. And that's why I think the audience appreciates it. They they know that you're talented and the whole cast is talented. But when you can make that connection, um, it yes. real, it real, it, yes. it'll give you more than a fan. I mean, they become like a like an ally. Like they want this show. Yeah. They they need it each week because it really gives them something. I care more about yes, I care more about the character than I do and the story than I do about the jokes this year. And like tonight's episode, Ken and Allison share a patient and you have uh, Pat and Demona, basically, um, and I'll just spoil it for you right now. I mean, basically, they break up for good, and we really we want. They're moving on. Demona's got a new boyfriend, and Pat is just kind of like the unlucky bachelor, you know. And I think that he kind of Pat lives in that space, and we have DK explaining, you know, to Dave wants to reinvent himself for middle school, and you know, and DK helps him out with like an old, a quote unquote, an old Korean an old Korean tale. So there's a lot of, a lot of moving parts in this episode. And, and next week, my real life daughter, uh, recurs for two episodes as Dave, Dave stalker slash eventual girlfriend. <laughs> so it, there's a lot of great stuff in store. And I mean, the first five episodes we've shot, you know, the fifth, ep- the sixth episode, we have a Korean ghost story that DK tells Dave that's part princess bride, part, <laughs> Simpsons Treehouse of Horror that we all act out the parts. I, I, we, our show is like we're we're really tapping into a deeper groove, and it's pretty it's pretty cool. I mean, I'm I'm you're my first radio interview of the year right now, and wow, and uh, and and for you to see every episode, I I want to I want to you know I want to invite you and and everyone listening to your station. And basically, you got the exclusive scoop of what's going on right now. <laughs> you know, yeah, and uh, it's really really cool. And um, I think the fans are really going to dig it. And I'm really uh, we go on Shark. Dave goes on Shark Tank this year. We filmed. <laughs> we already filmed the part where I mean he pitches uh, the hot legs duvet, which is basically a blanket with two holes cut out. I mean it's just. <laughs> It, we have, we, it, you know, right now we're filming Ken Goes to Korean School, and Ken's kind of, he's really lackadaisical in his Korean knowledge, so it's like an Asian Billy Madison. Oh, so speak, yeah. You know, it's, so right now we're, we're filming that, so me with a bunch of Korean 10 years old, 10 year olds, so we're doing that right now. Oh, I can't <laughs> so it's wait. A lot of, it's a lot of stuff, man, and, like, I just feel like we are, you know, being on community, they always say the second year of a sitcom is the best. Sure. Because the... The writers are more confident. They know the show. Mm-hmm. They know the characters, and the um, the actors know the the actors know the parts better. It's just easier to play. So um, I remember feeling that on Community, and and uh, although the show is completely different from Community, sure. I definitely. I definitely extrapolated that lesson for my own show. That's such a great point. Confident but not complacent. Well, listen, Ken, I know that that you're busy this morning, and I appreciate the time, as always. You're a great friend and ally of the radio station, and I hope everybody listening will watch Dr. Ken tonight. Season 2 is rocking and rolling on ABC, 730 Central. Here's to a great uh, second season and hopes for a third, my friend. Thank you. And, and seriously, help. thanks for all the love and helping us get there. I really appreciate that. It's the least I can do, pal. You've made me laugh, and uh, I've enjoyed watching you for a number of years, so I feel like it's, it's like a little bit of payback for, you know, I got to do it. <laughs> I got to do it for you. Thanks, brother. <laughs> all right, Ken, take care.